I'd like to try to put an end to the butt weld, lap weld debate. So to begin, let's take a quick look at the anatomy of the most common rust repair, and that's at the bottom of a fender, quarter, door, rocker, tailgate, or hood. We'll just move this guy out of the way. What you'll have is always have an inner panel, and that's on a hood, door, quarter, rocker. There's always an inner panel, and you'll find drains in there. And then you'll have the outer panel. And in dealing with the outer panel, you're going to have a lap weld that you must do, or a lap joint, or some type of pinch weld, and then the patch. The patch is going to connect to the outer panel, and you're either going to have you're going to have a, a lot of choices actually. A lap weld, a butt weld, fiberglass cloth, a panel adhesive, and it's good to know every type or every method. In this video, we're going to focus strictly on butt welding versus lap welding. Three constants or givens you can count on when welding a patch are number one, you can't guarantee that your welded seam will be waterproof. I cannot promise you that this will be waterproof, nor this butt weld. Number two, the access to the back is unlikely. So I can't check my welds back here. I can't check the quality of the welds to make sure that they're penetrating or that there's not a gap in between those welds. And finally, there will always be a lap joint or a pinch weld at the bottom of the patch which sort of negates the idea of strictly butt welding. With all that being said, let's compare the two repairs, butt welding and lap, and you'll be able to make an informed decision on what method will consistently last the longest and work best for you. Let's take a look at the first example. This is the original panel, and this is the patch. It was butt welded and metal finished. And know that you need to be able to get behind it with a dolly and a hammer to work out any low spots. Is this seam waterproof? I don't know. Are there any tiny pinholes, hairline gaps, or paper thin metal from grinding? I don't know. I can't guarantee that this is waterproof. In the next example, we butt welded using a gap between the sheets of metal right around the thickness of the weld wire. And on the outside, it looks pretty solid all the way across except for that little pit right there. And I'm not sure if that goes all the way through or that's just a pit on the outside. If you flip it over, it looks real good right here. Good penetration. But right here, I started to mess up a little bit and I might have a couple gaps. Now, what you have to remember is when you're butt welding a patch down low, there is no access to the back of the panel so you can't see your welds as you're welding this you can't check the back side to make sure that there are no gaps on the inside as we drive the car moisture enters the panel through window gaps hood and fender gaps and so on the water or salt water runs down the panel settles at the bottom and hopefully drains out and is able to dry inside up here, the moisture could find its way into the imperfections and quickly begin to bubble the finish and the outline of the repair will eventually begin to show. There are many times you will have to butt weld, but there are ways that it can be done to eliminate issues, be consistent, and have longevity. In this situation, we butt welded and ground the welds down just a little bit, not all the way flush. We can now tap this seam down with a body hammer and fill. The next example, we can form a channel using a tool, Eastwood has a tool, or you can use a pliers, form a channel and then fill that channel in with MIG welds. This isn't very pretty, but on the back side you can see there was good penetration and we would just grind this clean and fill that channel. The next example is a patch using a lap weld. The patch was laid over the original panel, about a quarter inch lap, welded solid, and again, I cannot guarantee that this is waterproof. The seam was tapped down and filled. The bottom was lapped and spot welded. On the inside, 
On the inside, again, the water is going to run down and settle at the bottom. And hopefully we have a drain hole drilled so it can drain and dry. The seam is upside down on the inside and will not hold water. If there are any imperfections in the welds, you have a nice rigid layer of waterproof fiberglass reinforced filler that will protect the finish. My guess is that it's going to rust at the bottom or down here first where the salt water settles before there are any issues up here. It's important to remember that lap welds, butt welds, panel adhesive, fiberglass cloth, even JB weld are viable options in rust repair, but must be used logically and correctly for maximum longevity. I hope you enjoyed this video on trying to put an end to the lap versus butt welding debate, and I hope it gives a clear picture of what's going on inside and outside of the typical rust repair. If you did enjoy it and you'd like to see my latest videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.